Indeed. I know precisely who you mean. Although it's been a hundred years since last I dreaded their escape. They are two monsters, Gorl the Slard Lord, and a Gith Yankee general named Sireka. They clashed across planes of reality, each plotting an invasion of our world, each all that stood in one another's way. I came across the pair in Rawlins Wood, and knew if either one of them prevailed, their army would lay waste to all Faerun. So, I trapped them in a demon stone, where they would fight for all eternity. But now you bring me word they've broken free, and villagers lay ruined in their wake. They must be stopped, if we are not too late.
We could use your help. Over here. It's so good to see you home. Kelvin, you're alive. I bring you thanks from Gareth Dragonsbane, King of Damara and its neighboring realms. Word of your triumph echoes through the land. You've done very well. The King has also granted that you three rule the wild land of Vasa. The region is untamed and perilous, but it's yours to master if you want it. We can handle it. Then I've one final word of caution for you. The Silver Sword is revered by the Githyanki. It is an ancient artifact, and they will surely come to take it back. Let them try. Dear Ilias, as I inscribe these words, you and your party journey here to me. In my mind's eye, I've seen what has occurred. I know the gem is lost and Gaul's free. So that you'd bring yourself before my gaze, I planted thoughts of me inside your head. But Gaul speeds here too, his heart ablaze, and likely when you read this, I'll be dead. His rage obscures my vision like a cloud of smoke. I can't foresee my fate. An instant may be all that we're allowed, and the amount I have to tell is too great. I'll use our time to send you on your quest to Chult, and let this letter say the rest. I sense that you are now consumed with shame. Refute it. It will only fuel his fire. Besides, if any human is to blame, it's me for the events that have transpired. I never should have trapped Gaul in that mine of magnifying quartz and hematite. As if I'd aimed a glass upon dry pine, the crystals helped his evil plans ignite. Yet, if indeed I've reached my final peace, I'll sleep well, for I also know I've sown a goodness strong enough to best this beast. How proud of you I've been as you have grown. Ilias, you and your team face great travails. Faerun depends on you. You must prevail. It was a beautiful town, nestled here in the spine of the World Mountains. I was one of the riders of Nesmi, protecting our people from orcs and frost giants and trolls. We'd heard from a scout that a small clan was heading our way, but he hadn't seen their true numbers, and we were quickly overwhelmed. And then it was a blur. I, I think I was hit from behind. Everything went black. I don't know how much time went by. When my eyes opened, I was pinned partly under a boulder and partly under one of my brothers in battle. He was dead. I couldn't get up and I could barely move my head. But I saw. I watched as all around me the trolls slaughtered the proud riders. My ears filled with their screams while I couldn't fill my lungs enough to shout. And then the king arrived. That was this clan's way. The grunts broke a town's defenses, and once the victims were weak, the king swaggered in and amused himself. Anyone still moving, he tore apart. Injured soldiers on the ground, women, and children. I wished that he would see me, but I wasn't so lucky. In time, everything faded again. When I awoke, I heard the survivors had fled to Mithril Hall, but I couldn't face them. I turned and walked the other way, and just kept walking. I come from a proud and ancient line of knights, the Silver Guard of Silvery Moon. My brothers, my father, and my father's fathers all served as defenders of the court. The fact that I was different was a spike into my father's heart. I was born with strong gifts of magic. Even as a child, simple spells like frost or levitating objects came naturally. 
I tried to impress my family, show them what I could do. My father was furious and forbade me from ever doing tricks like a stage performer again. I tried to comply. I studied martial arts, swordplay, tactics and strategy. And no one could argue I was a skillful fighter, and clearly my father's son. But I always felt like I didn't belong. Then, a few years ago, a gnome came to Silvery Moon to sell dyes. I learned that he was a sorcerer and an alchemist. Behind my father's back, I began to spend time with him, learning to hone my skills and asking questions about the world outside our land. When my father found out, he exploded with rage. He gave me a choice. Put away magic forever and be a knight, as was my heritage, or leave. The gnome led me to Kelvin, who took me in and trained me in the ways of a sorcerer. But even though my mage's skills have been with me since birth, I've never had the instincts of a wizard like Kelvin, the ability to reason and read signs. I felt a pull to Gemspark Mine and believed it was my fate to avert a great disaster. Instead, my presence caused it. Now Kelvin is likely dead, and I failed to stop that as well. In my hands, magic is nothing more than a blunt weapon, something I strike my enemies with. Perhaps it's because I was trained for so long to be a fighter. Or maybe I've just been stubborn and ignored my true destiny. When you were born one thing, but led since birth to be another, which are you, really? Jai, I'm so sorry. Save it. You want to console me? Let's slaughter those two things. That'll make me feel a whole lot better. Are you sure your father was killed? I saw him. Drow aren't supposed to live among wood elves. And they aren't supposed to fall in love with them. Drow are independent. They're killers. They live below ground, in the Underdark. My mother was part of a raid on the surface. She was injured and got separated from her group. My father found her, and cared for her, and eventually brought her back to Cedarleaf. When I was little, the village was attacked by giants. My mother fought beside the Wood Elves. She died, protecting her friends, because they weren't strong enough to protect themselves. That's what you get for making friends. Perilous forces are at work. The Bards report that Kelvin Blackstaff has gone missing, and that his tower lies in ruins. And I have received word that Ilias, his protege, and my friend from Silvery Moon, is headed here with two companions, a human from Nesmi, and a half-drow female. Despite my concern for Kelvin and the danger these accounts foretell, I cannot resist the moment of pleasure at the thought that Ilias is coming to me for help. I remember the trepidation in his eyes the first time we met. Well placed, I admit, when confronted by a drow. For I cannot deny that my people have earned the reputation that gives strangers pause. In Menzo Baranzan, city of my birth, far below the surface, treachery and murder are ways of life. Is it any wonder that the elven gods long ago banished the drow? But Ilias quickly learned that he needn't be afraid. For though I share the same birthplace and blood as the drow, I do not share their beliefs. Nor do I serve the Spider Queen Lolth, whose tenets of enslavement and wanton destruction run contrary to all that I hold dear. Indeed, I came to the surface world to escape that, to find a life worthwhile, and I expect that Lolth is not fond of my work here. For with my friends, Wolfgar, Catebri, Regis, and Brunor, I serve the way of community, friendship, and peace. Three causes that boil Lolth's ichor. Word has also reached us of a slard lord of tremendous power moving through the east. And I hear whispers from underground of a fearsome Githyanki general making her way to an ancient stronghold of her people. Somehow these events are all connected and their outcome will no doubt have far-ranging effects across the face of Faerun. In my heart, I sense that the three travelers heading toward me are the key. 
I cannot abandon my duties at Mithril Hall in this uncertain hour. But if those travelers are searching for a way to find the Githyanki, then I must help them. Niyuran Zireka, Kith Kul Nejut Klijarok, Kenzu Zed Nunga Kales Nuntu Narath, Karutzan Kwalkith, Zektuzan Gorgenzi, Nayad Bal Nal Kulith, Bal Vlakith, Kerzet Negenden. Ule Pantu, Zedoran Zebe Kalant, Menzen Olket Sento Wek. Haj tal yenkit, chai kika nal gif yanki koren. Ne haj solut. Ne shelek, ne guts fulken. Et drezu, ken jortek, ken shatu. Lan shal zak tukak, devlesta, ku ne jen senzuk. Linem katzu, danu zim, katu zim. Jen selta hol mene jaben me kiks disuz. Zim sen lef shen ka ade, shin ka akesh. Ne brek zu ka az, hek min rest han. Ya wan zat antak bal chen dum. Demite kik fen ku, gu rez hakin zetum jez kan kat. Pak in dres second dik, taka num ul val shak. U ten zu tra adesh. Len zip kana, jiden inik, het gagan festinels. Dar feirun lek, bel antuz zet yuk walak, an ke vuvim tral shaz resh valkith, kain usha neruz dunkat. Camillus, mighty dragon, forgive my intrusion. You will soon understand telepathy is the one means to reach you I have. I am Gorl, the Slod, the Lord of Chaos. I call to you from my prison, a demon stone deep in Jim Spark Mine. I've already arranged my escape. The gears of my plan have been turning for years, but I need your help. If you will provide it, Faerun will be mine and I'll reward you with limitless treasure. Despite my current state, I've sent a gift to demonstrate my power. Right now, a young monk struggles up the mountain that leads to your lair. His pack is brimming with gold. In his delusion, he thought he brought food for his climb. Food which, I expect, he won't be needing after all. Controlling weak minds is just one of my skills, but one that's proven useful from here. The wizard who trapped me here created a cell that requires three people to breach. Decades ago, I set the parts in motion to bring such a trio to me. I led a clan of trolls to sack the town Nesmi, but leave one fighter alive with his shame. My eye found a half-drow, unlike those around her. I made giants trample her village and slay her mother, leaving her bitter and hating her neighbors. And I detected a maze in a family of knights. I hardened the father's heart until he drove his son from home. I created three orphans, made weak by their solitude, so that I could lead them each to me with ease. And I did it all from inside this stone. Imagine when I am free. Once I gained my slide minions in from Limbo, and I have obtained a certain silver sword, powerful enough to move matter between planes, I will be able to ravage Faerun, crush it under my will, redraw it in my image. Today, my three pawns will arrive at the mine. But now, two orc armies make war on the surface. Over the riches the mine contains, watch over my trio, guide them through battle, and then force them into the mine. Once they've released me, <laughs> the mine itself will be but a taste of your prize. 